Hello everyone, this is John Boone, Health Science Librarian again. I want to continue with a little bit more in-depth information for your class. I want to kind of first begin with talking about uh, common components of any kind of a research paper or research study when you come across them. So let me pull up a PowerPoint that we'll look at. Okay, one of the major sections you'll find in a paper, very first section most likely, is going to be the abstract. And it's uh, basically an overview of the research study or, or research paper. It's usually just two to four paragraphs in length, roughly. Um, think of it as an executive summary that distills the key elements you know, of the article and, and the remaining sections of, uh, um, are then divided up into just a few, it should be just a few sentences to, that just distills the key elements there. The next section that we'll talk about was the introduction. And there's also sometimes a literature review combined. The introduction is just the authors attempting to answer and review any of the literature that is relevant. And then often the research rationale for why the research is important and will present a hypothesis that attempts to answer the key question. Lastly, the introduction, um, it summarizes, it should summarize at least, uh, and state the key question following the completion of the research. For example, are there any important issues or questions that are still left unaddressed? A literature review basically, as uh, you can see on the screen here, looks at the past research uh, on the author's thesis. Uh, the literature review will demonstrate to other researchers that the author has thoroughly acquainted him themselves with their topic. And like it says here, it's not often marked as a separate section. The method section, this is, uh, this is basically the meat of the paper. This is where the author goes in and talks about how um, it's arguably the most important part because he's gonna to try to talk about how the details uh, that they will use to support or disprove their thesis. Um, it allows readers a chance to evaluate the quality of the research and second, it provides details by which another researcher is able to uh, replicate the research and validate the findings. Um, ideally, the description of the methodology, methodology does not force you to refer to other documents. However, if the author is relying, relying on other existing models, um, they will be referenced in this section. The data, this is not necessarily the most important section, but it's uh, it depends on what your purpose is for reading the article. Um, looking at the data in combination with the results gives you a more unbiased result of their experiment. Sometimes you want to skip this section entirely because the methodology section is the most important section of this. Sorry about that. I unexpected phone call from somebody I don't know. Um, anyway, continue. After the data section, we have the results section. The author explains uh, the results of the data. In longer research papers, the results section contains data and perhaps a short introduction. Uh, typically, the interpretation of the data and the analysis is reserved for the discussion section, which is at the end. The discussion and, and or conclusion section um, is where the results of the study are interpreted and evaluated against the existing body of evidence of, uh, that's out there and the literature that is out there. Uh, oftentimes, this is where you'll get what bottom line. They'll say, what is the bottom line of the study? Is if they're looking at a particular drug, is the drug effective? Does it work? But we have to be careful in just jumping, as they would say, Jump and don't jump to the conclusion. It's good to read the conclusion, but as I've been told many times, far too often the conclusion giveth 
but the materials and the methods section take it away. So it's always best to look at the materials and the method used to arrive at the conclusion. Um, and after this section, after discussion, you will usually find the reference section of a paper. Um, bio, uh, the bibliography works cited or references. Um, the bibliography, it's uh, a list of the sources the authors used. Um, why is it important? Well, you can go back and look and look at the sources he's used, he or she has used, and determine if they were good sources. If you are needing sources, you can look at these sources and say, hey, maybe I can find something in these uh, other sources. We call it bibliographic mining. And it's a good way to find additional uh, articles or sources that would support your paper as well. Now, other areas that I would like to just briefly talk about before we go back into looking at a few databases um, is that in using some different kinds of search strategies that we can do when we search, um, and I'll show you when we get to the database, but there are a couple that we can use. One is truncation. And um, I'll talk about that before, a little bit before we get to looking at Boolean again. But truncation is where you would use the little uh, the uh, star symbol. And you could use the star symbol to truncate words. For example, like the word, um, you could type in farm, P-H-A-R-M, and the little star of the shift of eight. And then that would return results that would contain pharmacology, pharmacy, pharmaceutical. It expands out the word basically, and so or sometimes truncates. It's called truncation because you're actually you're just shortening the spelling of the word. But when you put the asterisks on there, it's going to go out and look at everything. So, and you can also use the same star or asterisks, and um, it allows for multiple spellings of a word. For example, if you spell the word sulfur and you put it in a search and you spelled it S-U-L asterisk um, U-R, that's going to return both the American and the British spellings of sulfur. Since uh, the British spelling is S-U-L-P-H-U-R versus the American spelling of uh, S-U-L-F-U-R. Uh, another key term to, to, and this is in a handout that you will be presented, so I don't, I don't have necessarily something on the screen right now, but you will be presented with this. Um, the exact, searching for exact phrases. If you want to search for an exact phrase, it works the same as it does in Google, the quotations. Just put quotation marks around something and it's going to search for that exact phrase. In most all databases work the same. There are very few differences, but if uh, you try this and it doesn't work in a particular database, go to the health, uh, go to the help section of that database, and that should be able to tell you what kinds of symbols are used for their forms of truncation, wildcard, and if they use the quotations for the exact phrase searching. Um, the next thing I have on here, we've I've talked about it a little bit before, but it's the Boolean searching, which is used with is basically Boolean logic. It's a system that allows you to set a relationship between keywords or concepts when searching. Most commonly used are and, or, and not. And um, they work in most databases, um, EBSCO and other databases will often have and as the default uh, setting that's already on there. And so either you're going to combine terms every time you search, and that's okay. It's meant to do that. And it actually makes your searches a little better, uh, more efficient. Now, as we might have mentioned earlier, the and, and here's another example. If you want to look at malaria and Africa, well, the only thing that it's going to return is this area here in the blue which are articles that contain both malaria and Africa. You will not have any articles that just talk about malaria, like say malaria in South America, that will not be included. Or articles that just talk about Africa and Africa and um, 
deforestation or something is not going to show up in there because you specifically joined that with and. Now, if you looked at um, congenital versus neonatal on this one and you had or in there, you're going to get articles that find congenital, articles that find neonatal, and then articles that find both combined. So you're going to find everything. If I scroll down a little more, this is actually supposed to be not, not no, but not. So in this one, malaria, not fever. So you're only going to return articles that talk about fever. I mean, sorry, only going to return articles that talk about malaria. Nothing that talk about malaria and fever and nothing that talk about fever by themselves. And you can combine searches using, like in this case, parentheses um, so, and make in your searches almost into like Venn diagrams here where we're searching for congenital or neonatal and malaria and Africa. So that's going to be the sweet spot that you're going to, the articles that you're going to return are going to be right in this area here. So that's kind of an example of uh, more detail about Boolean searching. I want to go in and look at another database that I mentioned before. It's called PubMed. So I'm going to go in to Bracket Library. Go to the A to Z database list again. And since we know the name of this one, we're just going to go to PubMed. And it's down at the bottom. PubMed is an excellent database. Um, it's one of the best right up there with Sanal. It has a lot of good limiters. And I'm going to show you how to use, how to search it, and then also how to search using what's called MESH, or medical subject headings. So we'll go into PubMed here, and it's a .gov. It's provided by the government. Uh, excellent resource. So let's uh, do a few practice searches here. I'm just going to do one using, I always like to click here and go to right here underneath the search box and go to advanced search, because that will bring up, I'll have previous searches that I've looked for in here uh, for my history, but I'm going to go ahead and delete those just by clicking here and I'll delete all my previous searches. And I've also applied filters from a previous search. Um, so if you come back and do a new search, you might want to check and see if you've got any filters that are still applied. If I hit clear all, it'll clear the filters. So from this screen, let's say we wanted to look up the concept of constraint-induced therapy and stroke. So. We would start here. We're going to use all fields and we're going to go in and type in train and boost therapy movement. Okay, of course I misspelled that. Therapy movement and stroke. Now, in this case, you'll see that PubMed does not have an and field here. So if you ever have to add and or are not to a search, it's always best to capitalize it because then the database will recognize it as a command. In this case, I'm ordering it to look for articles that only talk about con constraint-induced therapy movement combined with stroke. So. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add, and that adds to the search query box here, and then we're going to search. Okay, so it gave us quite a few results, so we, uh, 515. Well, we can come up here and we can limit by year. So I'm just going to bring this little slide bar here up to say 2015. Oh, now we went from 500 and something results down to what 153 because I've limited to within five years. Um, let's go in and look at see if we can add. Oh, let's go ahead and add English language here. We have additional filters, by the way, you could click on and you can go through here and uh, everything from article type to uh, 
it can be a legal case, legislation, letter, portrait. I mean, it can be a lot of different things. So it's it's good with the limiters. You can limit it by species, language, which we just did with English, uh, male or female, uh, type of subject that you specific that you want to look at, um, journal title if it's in there, and also by age of the population in here. So. Um, We'll go back in here and we're going to go ahead and hit English or highlight English. So we've knocked off one, uh, just a few more down to 148. Okay, let's go ahead and add in the limiter um, uh, age. Let's do uh, 19 adult 19 plus uh, 19 years of age or older. We drop down to only 65 results now. That's the whole idea of the limiters as well, is you want to go from having, you don't want 20,000 20, results. I mean, you know, um, in this case, uh, the fewer the results, the better. I mean, because uh, 20,000 results, you're never going to be able to uh, search through all those. You want to limit it down to the best. And by continuing to limit, you can limit it right down to the best, to what I call the sweet spot area of right where you want and the right amount of journals that you want. Um, so in this case, we've knocked it down to just 65, and these would be pretty easy to search. And you could even go in and add other limiters if you would like and uh, limit it by article type or limit it by, um, you know, just want to look in the abstract or do you want it to be full text? Um, and that would limit it even more. So that's um, uh, just a good general search, example of a good general search in Pub, PubMed. There's another way to search PubMed, and that's using the medical subject headings, which I really think they're pretty, they're pretty neat. Uh, maybe that's just the nerd in me, I don't know, but let's go back, we'll just hit PubMed, and that'll take us back, and we'll go back into advanced search. And again, let's go ahead and delete previous history of searches that we just did. And let's take out our limiters that we had put on this search too. Okay, now if you, uh, if we go back to PubMed. And actually, I'm sorry, we'll start with this page. Don't worry about the advanced anymore on this. We're gonna go down to the Med. Now, Mesh Database is down here where you can explore other um, other th features that they have within PubMed. Mesh Database. And let's, let's do a search on um, giving flu vaccines to people with egg allergies. Um, I used to have an allergy to eggs and therefore was told not to take flu vaccine. And I, a couple of years ago, I got the flu. First time I'd had it in 30 years. Felt like I had been run over by a truck twice. I decided to go ahead and chance it and get a flu shot, even though I had egg allergies. And I had no reaction whatsoever. And I'm thankful I did. Um, just a little background there. Um, so let's go ahead and start out by searching um, MESH, by the way. MESH is medical subject headings. It is a way that they have indexed the articles. For example, if you were to say, okay, I want to look up something about heart attack. Well, that's a layperson's term, you know, heart attack. Um, myocardial infarction is the medical term. And that's what MESH would come up if you searched here in MESH. For example, first we'll search here. Let's just say heart attack. Search. I'll show you what MESH will do. MESH is going to bring up the correct indexed term, which is myocardial infarction. It will give you a definition in a year that this term was introduced into the uh, MESH database. Um, gives you search builder uh, options. So you were looking at myocardial infarction. We could look at history of it. We could look at uh, therapy, surgery. And here is what's commonly referred to as the mesh tree. Um, in mesh, uh, mesh trees, the terms are arranged hierarchically by subject. 
uh, categories. More specific terms are arranged beneath broader terms. So you start out really broad here with the, um, like in this case, you've got the mesh categories, you've got disease categories, then you've got cardiovascular, heart, uh, myocardio, or myocardial ischemia. And then there we go, myocardial infarction. And then there's actually terms that would come uh, uh, further more detailed underneath myocardial infarction, uh, ST elevations and other um, more medical terms underneath there that you could click on and you could explore every one of these. And it would go and keep branching out to more trees and more trees. So you can see where that's listed. But let's go back to our original the original uh, topic about flu vaccines, giving flu vaccines to people with egg allergies. So let's uh, let's type in and see what happens. Flu vaccine. Okay, so then it comes back and tells me that the influenza vaccine is the correct term that at least for their database is indexed to. So we'll click on that. So, and this gives you an overview or where the subheadings are in here, blood, um, etiology, uh, a lot of the toxicity, and then uh, here's the other possible terms. You've got it kind of broken down and there's the tree. So you've got influenza vaccines or underneath viral vaccines, which are underneath vaccines, underneath uh, biological uh, products, and so on and so forth. So it's more, um, more broad this way, more specific as you go this way. So, okay, that's the term that they use. That's a term that I would like to use in my search then. So I'll come up over here on the right and I'm gonna click add to search builder. And I'll just click this. And you noticed it put it in here and it puts the quotations around it because I want that exact phrase, influenza vaccines. And it's from the mesh. So it means it's from the, um, it's from the index that they use. So, and then after we do that, let's see, it also happens to mention on here, adverse effects. Well, that's kind of a possibility if you give flu vaccines to people who have egg allergies. So that actually fits our search criteria too. So let's click that and let's go ahead and also add that to our search builder by clicking add to search builder. Then we wanna kind of look at egg allergies. I don't know if that's what they use in mesh or not, but that's the term that I came up with. So let's just see egg, egg allergy. Oh, I misspelled the word allergy, but that's okay. Oh, okay. they use egg hypersensitivity instead of allergy. And again, they've got subheadings, drug therapy, diet therapy, diagnosis, complications. And then here's your mesh tree showing, showing that we've got egg hypersensitivity underneath uh, food hypersensitivity, hypersensitivity and so on and so forth. So you go up here again, we've got disease category, it's very broad. Then we have hypersensitivity and then we just keep going more and more specific. So that is something we want to look at in our um, search because that also it replaces egg allergy that I was using and it's more specific and it's what this database uses in their index. So let's add that to our search as well. Okay, that looks like that's gonna meet our search criteria. So at this point we can click search probe med and see what kind of results we get. Okay, we got 47 results. That's pretty good. That's narrowed down pretty good. And that we've got, looks like some article here that says free from PubMed Central. That means those articles will be free. There's, there's no, no catches right there. You could download those articles immediately. 
and this would allow you to show more articles here. Uh, we could do limiting. We could go and narrow, try to see what would happen if we narrowed it within five years. You can narrow it by clicking on that button I just clicked on here, or you can narrow it uh, using this little drag and slide tool right here. So that knocked it down from um, other, what, 50 something results there down to uh, five. And then we still have some more, an article here, and there's other articles that we could, if we don't have, available well that's an article there but this is a uh, this is a review and this here is a clinical trial and another article so it kind of tells you what they are so we could open those up and look at them or download them and if we don't have them in our database we could of course get those um, by getting them interlibrary loaned as we've looked at before now Basically, the mesh, as I was saying, is basically it's the indexing process and gives you the most specific terms that are applied for to a journal article held within PubMed. Um, during your PubMed search, PubMed uh, mesh terms recognized in the query are automatically mapped to the most specific terms in your search, giving you the most accurate results. Um, there's an example of uh, PubMed, searching in PubMed, um, and we've went over a few things like the truncation and the Boolean uh, operators. Another thing that I, I would just like to leave you kind of with with, that, with this video is that uh, stay organized in your process of collecting research. When you're researching, stay organized, um, keep notes, where how you found things like this search strategy we just this search uh, a strategy we built here in PubMed take notes we started out what we started out with and then what we we added to and what the mesh database said that they were terms they used to index write that down I did this in PubMed and I searched this this and this and had this many results um, in case you ever have to repeat that search or in case you ever have to go to the library and say you know i was really trying to find this again but i can't but here's how i started my search or how i did my search we can probably go back in and at least backtrack and perhaps help you recover those search items if you write things down it's just so much easier to do that for yourself um Write down the name of the database that you use, like I just said, PubMed, other sources, and your search strategy. Um, um, let's see, in the case of like literature reviews and systematic reviews and meta-analysis, you may want to create uh, blogs and track the information that you're retrieving. You know, create a working bibliography. A working bibliography means that you save the citation information for potential sources as you find them. Doesn't mean you necessarily go and pull up every one of those sources. It's just like you read it. This is an interesting title. I think this could be applied to the research that I'm doing. I don't have time to go dig that article right now, but I wanna write down the, um, the, bi the bibliography. I wanna write down the citation so I can go back and find it later and see if it really was something that's gonna work for me. Um, you know, and as you go along, you're going to eliminate sources because uh, your your research might take you in one direction or another direction, and that's okay. That's what research is all about. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, and you so you eliminate some. Um, you might want to create a file folder, as I had mentioned at one time before. Create a file folder, and whenever you get a uh, journal article um, in from interlibrary loan, save it to that file. Save uh, working bibliography to that file. Um, write down or maybe put it in a Word document the search terms you used in the database you used to search and have that all in that file so you've got everything in a central location. Um, you might just need those later as your paper evolves. Um, that's kind of what I wanted to talk to you about in this video. Um, Again, if you ever have any questions or, or uh, need assistance in any way, I'm here. You can, uh, you can contact me through my email, call my office, or you can go through the BookMe account, and I'm more than happy to help at any time. I hope you have a wonderful day, and hope this semester continues to go well for everybody. Thank you.